dreams, all life's joy you've given me when troubles come. You're always there to make me smile. So come what may, thy will be done. I love you, Jesus, God's only Son, Lord, you're the best thing that's ever happened to me. I owe it all to you, Lord. All I have is yours, Lord. Take my life and make it one. You let me be. Oh 
the trials and temptations that we go through day by day. Just remember all he's done, how he was with you all the way. And his grace will be sufficient, no matter where you are or what you're going through. His grace will be sufficient. Oh
Father, I come to you today, Lord, Heavenly Father, bowing our heads. Lord, thank you now for this opportunity to stand today, Lord. Heavenly Father, I'm unworthy to stand here. God, I ask you to forgive me for I failed you and come short. Lord, Heavenly Father, bless your word today, Lord. Heavenly Father, as you said, it not go out void or wouldn't return unvoid, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you just to be with our pastor and his family during this hour, Lord. Bless Tim and Tony, Lord, as they watch over and take care of Emory and the doctors, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you to lead God and direct everything that's said and done here. God, we love you for all that you've done, but most of all for sending your son, Jesus, to save an old wretched soul like me. I love you, Lord, and we ask you to be with us, for it's in Jesus' name that I do pray. Amen amen. Thank God for the opportunity to be here. Nobody loves you like Jesus does. Amen. The Bible says, No greater love hath a man than to lay down his life for a brother. I not seen a whole lot of people laying down lives for anybody except the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible said he came some 2,000 years ago and bled and died on old Calvary's cross and uh, uh, got up on the third and appointed day, and I've read it. I believe it. It's settled in heaven, and I thank God for it, and I'll stand on it till the day that Jesus comes back, splits the eastern sky, calls us home, and I'll be going home with him. Now, you can sit and you can argue with me and say whether you want to or not, but I'm telling you, God's coming back. His son's coming back, and uh, I believe that with all my heart today. Didn't have any idea of what would be this morning. I'll be real brief and do what God had me do and step out of the way, but I'll read some scripture into you here this morning. I believe we're in this day and time, and there's a lot of people that is shaken and stirred anymore, and we need to be steadfast. I say this, and you listen to what I'm fixing to tell you, where I'm not hung up on a lot of old traditions, but the Bible says to hold on to some good traditions. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Thessalonians, you want to turn there, chapter number 2, we'll begin reading verse number 1. I'll get out of the way real quick. It won't take me long this morning. Just a thought, and I've read it this week and read the Word. And got in here and thought about it this morning when he asked and when he called there about 11 o'clock, 11.05. You, uh, uh, he asked if I'd stand. This was just a thought that came to mind, Brother Danny. He said, Now we beseech you, brethren... This is chapter number 2, verse number 1 in Thessalon- the second epistle of Thessalonians. Second epistle of Thessalonians. Uh, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming, amen? amen. Uh, he begins telling you that. He's coming. He said, and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not, or that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. He said, "For for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. Hey, we're in that day. There's a falling away. The churches are empty. They're shut down. It says in there, and he says, and it says that, that the, sin, the that the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You may be seated. I want to give you this thought today, and I'll try and leave, be real brief. It's time that God's coming back, and I believe he's on his way sooner now, Brother Lonnie, than he's ever been. I've heard it preached since I was a young man, Brother Vernon, Brother James Blayton. He started preaching, Brother James Langston preached into my hearing, Jesus is coming. It's been some 40 years. He's not come here yet. But the Bible says life is but a vapor. We're only here for a little while. Let me tell you what. Jesus is coming. Whether you like it or not, he's on his way and you better be ready. This old world's being shaken. The Bible says it's tossed every day every, with every wind and doctrine. There's a lot of things coming that down the pike that we see. And you say, well, we're not changing. Hey, let me ask you a question and be real serious with you. Has the world changed in the last 10 years that you live in? Or am I just blind? Has it changed? Raise your hand. Why has it changed? Because we've allowed it to change. You say, well, I can't stop it. Oh, yeah, you can too. The Bible says to be steadfast. He said to hold on. You go over and read in the 15th verse. He said, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to or hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistle. Now, I'm telling you, we can hold fast to the things that God allows you. You say, what do you mean? I've used this illustration before. We had prayer in schools, amen? We had prayer in schools. We so easily let it go because we did not hold fast to what we'd been taught. We did not stand fast on what we believed in. We didn't say, hey, we're going to 
to pray in school no matter what. And now you can't pray at a ball game. You can't pray, or you don't, they don't, I don't even know, last time I was there, I didn't have a moment of silence at a ball game. And I say that to say, we have to be stand, st- steadfast, and stand, it says, that ye be not shaken in mind. Everything about this world is trying to shake and turn you upside down. Right? What's right's wrong, and what's wrong is right. We're trying to take, and I'm not preaching on, I I promise you, I'm not preaching on politics today, but we're trying to legalize all use of drugs. Wrong, church, that's wrong. We have to stand on that. We have to have, oh, Brother John John, and I went to work for him again, and I believe this the day, uh, from the day I died, he told me, he said, you principles are tossed and left in the front, or at the end, you principles are tossed. to say that the politics that the phone system that the computer system is interrupting our mind and it's shaking us and we're tossed with every doctrine back and forth we don't know what to stand on anymore we don't know what to stand on anymore we don't know whether to stand over here with the right or we don't know whether to stand with the left and I know that's backwards because y'all are looking at me different. but we don't know whether there's which side to stand on let me tell you something you better stand with Jesus Christ You better stand with his word. The Bible says heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word, his word shall not be or shall not pass. It shall not be destroyed. But we're shaking in our mind. He said in here, he said, that ye be not soon shaken in your mind. Everybody would come in contact with him more. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. What do you think is going to happen here? What do you think is going to happen there? They say, I can't sleep at night. I don't know what's going on. We've got COVID running around. We've got things. The economy's crashing. My 401k is going down. Your mind is going, going 100 miles a minute. And you can't get any. That is a process. I must die daily and by the renewing of my mind. Right. Be not shaken. God has not changed. Amen. Christ has not changed. He's the same God today, yesterday, and forevermore. And we should not be shaken with every doctrine, every wind, and everything that's told us. Some of us will even go home today and we'll turn the radio on or we'll turn the news on or we'll turn the telephone on and we'll, be, we'll believe something by the end of the day. Right. One of the folks over at work says the internet said it, so that made it true. And I said, well, if you believe that, you you already uh, been consumed. Just because the internet says it doesn't make it so. Boy, that just because the internet says it doesn't make it so. But I'm looking at a book that's been around for some 2,000 years that everything that's happened in it has been proven to be true or it has come to pass. I believe I'd stick to that book, don't you? They sit over there in the Red, in the Red Sea, I believe it was, said, They'd sent divers down back years ago and found chariots and wheels and uh, 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 leftovers from broken down chariots and, and bones of horses down there. Who split the Red Sea? And then they walked across on dry land and the Bible says that he let the waters loose and it consumed Pharaoh and his armies and these chariots laying at the bottom of that. I believe that's true. It's pretty true, don't you? I'm telling you, this word will stand when all else fails. And if we would renew our mind and not be shaken by it and get in it more, and I'll tell you this, I'll be the first, Brother Keith, to tell you, I am the chief failure here to not read my word enough every day. Guilty. Guilty, and I'm not proud of it, Leroy. I need to be in my word more every day. I need to read my Bible more every day. I need to be... In God's word and his scripture more every day. Shame on me for not being in his word. Because I believe if I'm more in his word, I'll not be easily shaken. I'll be able to stand on the chief cornerstone in the solid rock that he so, so adamantly told us about over in the New Testament. I'll be locked into the chief cornerstone. He said that you be not shaken in your mind or be troubled. How many of us are troubled this damn time? 
We're more worried about a retirement. We're more, more worried about a paycheck. Now, I'm not taking away from people that care and for men and women that want to take care of their family. Praise God for you. I'm glad. I love a good, hard-working person that cares about their family. Don't you? Hey, I'm telling you, that I, I do. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. But we're worried and we're, our mind's more in trouble or be troubled with things of this world than they are the things of the world to come. I said this back when we taught, preached uh, on intercession. If we was more worried about lost people being saved, we'd see more lost people saved. But you know what we're worried about? You know what we're worried with? We're worried about the world. We're worried about what time we can get out, what television show we can go home and watch. We don't want to be in church for more about an hour or two. We don't want to be in service with God's people for more than just an hour or two because we get hard and we get burned out. And you know what? I promise you this, friend, if you don't like me now, you sure won't like me here. Right. You won't like me here because the Bible says that we'll be forever together in heaven. And I know you won't see this old flesh and body. I know you won't see this old gray hair, this old fat little belly, but I'll be there in spirit. Amen. And I shall be like him as you will be too. So we better learn to start enjoying our time together. The Bible says much more than we see the day approaching. What it talks about, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, we should come together more often. Be glad to see God's people and grow in spirit and truth. And not be troubled with the things of this world, but be happy in the things that God's got for us to come. You'd rather leave the church house, wouldn't you? Filled with the Holy Ghost. You'd rather leave the church house knowing that some soul was saved or having a spirit-filled uh, uh, revival meeting and all these altars fill up, don't you feel better when you leave that way? Yeah. Hey, man, I do. But when we come in, we got the world on our mind more so. or We got, we got something else on our mind that somebody else is thinking about. And I do. I'm guilty again. I've been sidetracked by coming in here and being have something else on my mind, Brother Danny, where I can't be focused on the Word or on the message or on the songs. But when I find myself zeroed in, I find God sitting there just pouring the blessings out. As Sister Don says, he just pours the blessings out if I'm zeroed up with him. And I ain't got no trouble on my mind. But I'm telling you, every one of us is consumed with trouble in our mind. You say, what do you mean by that? We're more, we're more worried about the world and somebody around us than we are worried about people saved and going to heaven. We are. We are. I would say more right now that I'd say that over half the church, and I'm not saying Calvary, okay, don't get up and start throwing books at me. I'm talking about the living church. I'd say that half the church out here is more concerned with the next week and a half than what they are God's Word. There's more of them put more effort into it than what they'd put into an old camp meeting to come out and listen to an old-fashioned preacher. Get up here and preach and try and see that souls are saved before it's eternally too late. They'll want to hear what the president's got to say, or the former president, so they'll want to hear what the Senate's got to say, or the congressman, men. Well, that's got to deal with my future. Let me tell you something, church. Your future lies in the hands of the living God. And that's the only place it lies. And that's where you better hope it's sure to up and not be troubled with the things around you. He said to be not troubled. He said neither by spirit. You say, what do you mean by that? Remember a song that my mama used to sing and the quartet used to sing, Lord, I need to feel your spirit once again. Where's the spirit gone in the church? Where's the spirit gone in the church where we can come in and feel the spirit of God that passes from breast to breast? Where's it gone? Where have, what have we done with the spirit? The Bible says that we've quenched it. He said to quench not the Holy Spirit. Over in the book of Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians, he says to quench not the Holy Spirit. But we come into the house of God, we're troubled in our mind, we're shaken with everything that's gone around us. What does that in turn affect? It affects the spirit of the church. We can't feel God passing by, or we don't want to feel God passing by, or the Holy Ghost passing by, so we shut it down. And when we come to the house of God, we leave and we say, Boy, I wish the Spirit would have moved to church today. Well, maybe it was us that didn't let the Spirit move through us. Guilty. Guilty. Not proud of that, but I've been there. Because I've had my mind on things outside of this church or things outside of what my pastor was preaching on and it had my mind troubled and had me shaking when the Bible tells us that Jesus said I'll go with you I'll take care of you I'll provide everything you need if you'll just trust in me is that not right? if we could rid the whole church of all the troubles and shaking and, and, and the stuff I just wonder what we'd all see if we was all filled with the Spirit of God 
As they say, I bet they'd shout the sheetrock off and bust the windows out of this place every Sunday if you could get everybody in one mind and one accord and not be shaken or not be stirred or not be troubled with this outside world, but center on Jesus Christ and what He done and what He's going to do for us one day. He said, neither by spirit nor by word. By word, what do you mean by word? Ain't that The Bible says, the Bible teaches over in the book of James, a tongue is a deadly poison that no man can tame, right? Ain't that what he said? He said the tongue is a deadly poison that no man can tame. You think words don't affect people around you? They do. They do. And that's how we do, by word of mouth, right? And we hear and we preach and we teach and we talk and we, if you will, uh, we gab and we chat a lot. That's a lot not needed, amen. But some of it is needed, amen. It is. But by word, we're conceived, we're, we're doomed, we're consumed, we're overcome by, our, by a lot of people's words. Now I say that to say, I think there's good things that you can trust in people, amen? I mean that. I'll take just a minute and brag on some folks. I mean it. I brag on Lonnie for a minute. I've been around him since I was knee high to him. And I trust, I say this, Lonnie taught me this, not to ever trust any man but to have confidence. But I have confidence in Lonnie's word and what he says and what he means to me. He's a man of his word. He showed that through me throughout the years. And I say there's other people in here too that have integrity. Brother Danny, you've got integrity in your word. I'm glad your word settles with me because when I believe you tell me something, I believe it to be so. I believe it to be so. I think there's good words out there, but I think there's a lot more bad words being spread about than there is good. So by word, he said, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. What he means by that letter, he doesn't mean by, by, by some letter or by some note, but by the word of God. We listen to the word of God. When we listen to the word of God, when we listen to what he has for us to, to do daily, then we'll not fail him. We'll not be troubled. We'll not be stirred. We'll not be shaken. We will not be. And he said, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the traditions. Listen to me. It's verse number 15, 2 Thessalonians 2, 15. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or whether by epistle. What words is he talking about? The word of God. The traditions you, talk, the traditions you was taught through the word of God. There's some good traditions that God's word teaches us to do. You'll say, what's one of them? He said to pray. But he tells us not to pray in vain, right? He said to not pray in vain repetition. He said not to go out into the streets and make it a scene. He said but to pray to the Father above sincerely and humbly through the Spirit of God to pray. I believe he wants us to pray. I believe it's a tradition that's taught to us down through the years that we should pray. Amen. That's one of the things that Lonnie's always hung his hat on ever since I was a young man running around with. Just pray. If you'll pray, God will come through and it'll be in his time, not our time. But it's a good tradition. Amen. Right, amen. The Bible says to fellowship one with another. If everybody wants to put their hand in their pocket, if everybody don't want to hug or don't want to take and have no love in their life, the Bible teaches us that we are to fellowship one with another. I know sometimes some people get uncomfortable or some people may not want to, but it's a good tradition that the Bible teaches us what to do is to fellowship one with another. He said that we should bear one another's burdens. That's a good tradition, right? That's a good tradition that we ought to take up. I ought to be troubled when Brother Danny's troubled. I ought to be troubled when Donnie's troubled. My heart's already troubled this morning for my pastor that got in the back door, got a phone call that his daughter's sick. Now, they're now sitting in the ER waiting to see what's wrong. My heart's heavy for my pastor and his wife. Those things are good. That's good things. That's what we've been taught to bear you one another's burdens. Amen. That's a good tradition. But the Bible speaks of vain traditions too. But he said to stand, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. And I'm telling you right now, this world's going to try and shake everything we can out of these children, out of these young people, out of these adults. Just stand. It's all right to say, no, I don't believe in that. It's all right to say, no, I don't agree with that. It's okay to have your spiritual and godly Opinion through God's word if the world's wrong. 
I think we're starting to see our children take a turn to where they can't stand up and say, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he said. Stand there and tell them that. If they don't like it, then tell them to call dad or tell them to call mom or tell them to call the preacher, the deacon. That's what we're teaching them, to hold on to the good tradition. Young people, attend church. Young people, bow your head and pray. Young people, respect your elders. Young people, take and love the Lord Jesus Christ with all your heart. Do what the work of an an evangelist, and this is a good thing. But we're being tossed with every wind and doctrine. We're being blown around with everything that comes down the pike. Somebody says, well, you know, I I don't know. It ain't so bad. I kind of halfway believe in that. Well, you'll get over in the book of Revelation where he talks about people's lukewarm fence riders, right? He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold as to be lukewarm because he said, make, you sp- make him sick, make him spew you out of his mouth. Just take a stand. It's all right. If you, what was it Preacher Blanton used to say? If me and you are in an argument, one of us is wrong, I promise. Ain't that right, Brother Long? Ain't that what he used to say? Hey, it's all right for one of us to be wrong. I mean, I'm probably more wrong than I am right. But the thing about it is, if I stand on something at work, Brother Mike, somebody comes by and says, you believe in that? And say, no. And they say, oh, why not? Well, I reckon I have to give anybody an answer. I just don't believe in that. We've got to a point where Christian people cannot stand fast with the conditions and the teachings that they were taught throughout this life. Right. It's important to come to the house of God. It's important to be here. It's important to pray. I want us to stand on the good things. I want us to not be shaken. I want us to not be stirred. I want us to not be troubled. I want people to see that when you come by and you see these, these Christian folk that are out here in the county, whether it be for uh, the lighthouse or whether it be fellowship or liberty, and Miles Grove doesn't make any difference what church we're in. It's you say, hey, those folks are steadfast. They're unmovable. They're still attending. They're still powering God. They still believe in the same God that we was taught when we was young people. Amen. I'd love to go back. I'd love to go back as a young man. And for all the people that was taking and teaching me and standing by me. And see if you're still standing fast. See if you're still holding fast to the traditions that was taught right here in this pulpit in the Calvary Baptist Church and in these altars. A lot of people's not holding fast to those traditions anymore. You say, well, they, they're not all as good. I'm not saying all the traditions are good, but I'm saying there's some good things that come out of the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Our blessed pastor's taught us and that has brought us this far, and I'm thankful for it. So when trouble comes your way, Brother Donna, come get song ready. I told you it wouldn't be long this morning. So when trouble comes your way, are you going to be over, oh, overcome by it? When somebody comes by and tries to shake the very foundations of what you stand upon. No, Brother Jake said it this morning. Ask me how my faith was and how his faith was. Somebody comes by and tries to shake the very foundation that you believe in. Where are you going to stand? You're going to tell them it. Yeah, it didn't happen in a big boom theory. God created us from the dust of the earth. It didn't happen from apes. It didn't happen from a cosmic twist up. It didn't happen because evolution took place. It happened because Jesus Christ and His Father spoke us into existence, breathed life into the nostrils of the dirt, and asked us to take and have life. We had life, and we messed up. And after we messed up, He sent a Savior, His Son, and here we are today. That's the short version. Now, if you want to get in the long version, we can go from Genesis to Revelation. But I'm telling you, stand upon the things that you believe in, and it'll all be all right. It, it'll be all right, I promise you. If it's Jesus Christ you stand on, I promise you it'll be all right. If you want to hang something high at your house that has Jesus Christ's name on it, you want to read scripture, you want to pray, wherever you're at, you do it. Because I promise you this, the sinner, or the lost man, or the evil, or the whoremonger, or the liar, or the idolaters, and they're going to say something. Are they not? Are they not robbing our homes? Are they not robbing our stores? Are people not being shut down everywhere because evil's running rampant and good's not standing? We need to take a stand more for Lord Jesus Christ. Be not shaken.
He said, I'm going to read it. That you be not shaken in your mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter from us, as the day of Christ is at hand. The closer Christ gets, I'm going to tell you this, and it may be a shocker to you, but the closer the day that the Lord gets to come back to see us, I believe the world's going to get a little crazier. I believe that. I believe it's going, I believe it's going to get a little more out of hand down here, don't you? The closer Christ gets back, the more it's going to get out of hand. Bible said, if you read on down that next verse, as there is a great falling away, it says, except there come a falling away first. We're starting to see the beginning of that now. When it's all fell away and people's give up on God, how crazy do you think this world's going to be? What do you stand on today? You stand on the, the, the Word of God and the tradition just taught in the house of God throughout your childhood throughout your uh, 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 young age life or throughout your adult life, do we stand on anything anymore? we stand on anything. I'll say this and I'll try and close and be real quick about it. I remember the day and time next you think the devil ain't after you and after the word of God you are sadly mistaken they're already taken and trying to get rid of that King James Bible look and see how many different versions and I'm not I'm not getting off on that message today but look and see how many different things are out there now instead of that blessed old book been working for so long you know why? Because that right there still got power. It's still got power. And it still moves homes. It still moves souls. I don't care whether you're drug stricken. I don't care whether you're laying out here in the middle of the world. I'm telling you, there's power in that. When God comes down and He touches your life out of it, it'll change your heart and life. Young man mentioned that in here this morning already. It'll change your life. But it ain't going to change nobody's life if we don't stand for it and hold on to what God's taught us. His word. Where do you stand today as we stand all over God's house? Where do you stand? Are you shaking? Are you stirred? Are you troubled by your spirit, by your word? I hope not. I hope that you'll stand. I hope you'll stand by me that when trouble comes, that we can all stand arm in arm, breast to breast. Not that we're pointing fingers at one another. Not that we're taking them on the road down our brother or sister in Christ. But I'm telling you, we're in a spiritual warfare and we're going to need one another in the next little bit. salvation as they say. Come ahead, young people. We'll come up here. We need to let the pastor hear us today over. 
the hospital. We're going to come up and we're going to praise the Lord three good times. We're going to go home. If you remember the preacher, the last.